Okay, I have one that you're probably gonna think is silly, but no. never. Um, I do, I, I have always wondered, cause I, have you ever had like astrology or numerology or any of that kind of stuff? Like, have you ever had people do that to you? I mean, obviously, right? All the time. Welcome friends. This video is about the possible combinations in our birth charts regarding fame. A recent poll by the National Science Foundation found that 40% of Americans think astrology is a science. And somebody said something about my star sign that I liked, you know, because you don't believe in star signs unless somebody says, oh yeah, your star sign, you guys were all like really fucking, you were really intelligent. And, and then you're like, you know what? I am intelligent. Star signs do have a little bit of truth to them. Mars is in retrograde, therefore my life is affected by that. You think Mars? Oh, I think that's you, you think Mars yeah. gives a rat's ass about you? It is so interesting to me that men will find a logical explanation to even things that are completely illogical. Everything. Carl Sagan, in his historical scientific documentary, said that there are two ways to view the stars, as they really are, and as we might wish them to be. Astronomy and astrology were not always so distinct. For most of the human history, the one encompassed the other. But there came a time when astronomy escaped from the confines of astrology. The two traditions began to diverge in the life and mind of Johannes Kepler. It was he who demystified the heavens by discovering that a physical force lay behind the motions of the planets. He was the first astrophysicist and the last scientific astrologer. The intellectual foundations of astrology were swept away 350 years ago, and yet astrology is still taken seriously by a great many people. Did you ever notice how easy it is to find a magazine on astrology? Virtually every newspaper has a daily column on astrology, and almost none of them have even a weekly column on astronomy. People wear astrological pendants, check their horoscopes before leaving the house. Even our language preserves an astrological consciousness. For example, take the word disaster. It comes from the Greek for bad stars. So what is all this astrology business? Fundamentally, it's the contention that which constellations and planets are and at the moment of your birth profoundly influences your future. A few thousand years ago, the idea developed that the motions of the planets determine the fates of kings, dynasties, and empires. Astrologists studied the motion of planets and asked themselves, what happened last time that say Venus was rising in the constellation of Go? Maybe something similar would happen this time as well. It was a subtle risky business that astrologers became employed only by the state in many countries. We always have a capital of for anyone, and on the contradictory, we also had official astrologers to read portents in the skies. Why do you guys think this was there? Because a good way to overthrow a dynasty was to predict its downfall. Astrology developed into a strange discipline, a mixture of careful observations, mathematics, and record keeping. In fuzzy thinking and PS4 nevertheless, astrology survived and flourished. Whether your personality is influenced by things that are cosmic or not, any control test to find this out always fails. So why is it that people still believe in it? I'll tell you why. One of the reasons is because it seems to lend the cosmic significance to the routine of our daily lives. It pretends to satisfy our longing and feel personally connected with the universe, making humans egoist. The great astrophysicist and a great speaker who is well known among all, Neil deGrasse Tyson did an experiment with astrology and people. In his experiment, he picked one of the 12 horoscopes at random, let's just say it was a Scorpio, and read to a room of 100 people. And he asked, did I just read your horoscope? And guess what, 70% of the hands went up. Well, no, of course 70% of the people in public can be Scorpio. So you guys do realize that they are written in such a fashion that you can find the meaning that you know and need for yourself because of the way each one of those horoscopes are written. When you lift up the things 
that are most applying to you and you suppress into your mind the things that don't apply to you and walk away thinking that they are speaking to you because of what time of year you were born and we all know about this as it's a psychological effect fear we remember the hits and forget the misses it is just like how you pick up your phone and say oh grandma it's you and you just forget how many times you thought it was her but it wasn't those don't get remembered as an incident in your life and get rapidly forgotten we only remember the hits so you can end up thinking that you have special telepathic powers so we are susceptible to all manners of being psychologically fooled by our own brain and by our own sense of knowing what is real and what is not there is a great quote from shakespeare where he says what is it that your fault lies not in the stars but in ourselves astrology suggests a dangerous fatalism if our lives are controlled by a set of traffic signals in the sky it does not simply make sense any no updates and no data get me whoever is following it is walking blindly believing he or she will find the great heavens at the end of his walk they are simply believing in profit without questioning the method if you compare the horoscope of scorpio and astrology.com and horoscope.com you interestingly find that these predictions are not predictions they just tell you what to do and they don't say what's going to happen they're consciously designed to be so vague that it could apply to anybody Astrology can be tested by the lies of the twins. There are many real cases like this one. Suppose there are two twins and one is killed, say, a riding accident or is struck by lightning. If the position of the planets at our birth actually affected our being, then why is it that one twin was killed and the other was not, whereas the planet which was present and which did rise at the time of their birth was the same? If astrology were valid, how could have such profoundly different fates existed? It turns out that astrologers can't even agree among themselves what a given horoscope means in careful tests. They're unable to predict the character and future of people they know nothing else about, except the time and place of birth. Also, how could it possibly work? How could the rising of Mars at the moment of my birth affect me then or now? The only influence of Mars which could affect me was its gravity, but the gravitational influence of the obstetrician was much larger than the gravitational influence of Mars, as Mars is a lot more massive, but the obstetrician was a lot closer. The inverse square of distance, remember? Different cultures imagined diverse patterns in the sky, but the same is true for all other constellations. Some people think these things are really in the night nice sky, but we are the ones who put these pictures there ourselves. We were under folk, so we put up hunters, dogs, lions, and young women up in the skies. If the constellations were have to be named in 21st century, I suppose we put there Michael Jackson, ice cream cone, doggy coin, and maybe even mushroom clouds. A new set of human hopes and fears placed among the stars. But there's more to the stars than just pictures. For example, stars always rise in the east and always set in the west, taking the whole night to cross the sky. There are different constellations in different seasons. At the beginning of every autumn, the same constellations arise. It never happens that a new constellation suddenly appears out of the east, one that you have never saw before. There's a regularity and a permanence and a predictability about stars just as the return of sun after a total eclipse. It's rising in the morning after its troublesome absence in night and reappearance of the crescent moon after the new moon all spoke to our ancestors. The possibility of surviving death up in their disguise was a metaphor of immortality. Astrology was astronomy in its nascent form and astrology was also a science in its nascent form just like alchemy was chemistry in its nascent form Now when we look back on the astrologers and view their contributions to the history of the world they turned tables for humanity It was the dream of astrology that there was some relationship between the movement of the planetary bodies 
and the fixed stars and human destiny. And that's what drove us to build the FIR astronomical observatories and also to determine that there was a proper time for planting and proper time for harvesting. But the questions like how did it all started at first still remain. When we encounter something absolutely unknowable or unknown, what we do is drape that unknown thing in fantasy as a first pass as approximation to the truth and then refine that fantasy as a consequence of iterative critical analysis. As the mathematics was not profoundly developed as it was at Kepler's time, the astrologers could only imagine a supreme beam controlling all of these patterns, and their fantasies kept on growing and influencing people of the streets to the people of kings of great kingdom. Now the time has changed. We are capable of looking deep into the cosmos. We have profoundly advanced mathematics and devices to accurately understand the behavior of things around us, and we are advancing. Our faith on astrology has come to the edge. We must go with science that is required for our future generations. Astrology is not science anymore. You can call it pseudoscience or a hoax. Do you guys believe in astrology and did this video hurt your sentiments? Well, I am sorry for that, but this is what I think and I hope I was insightful on this topic. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We had to do a lot of research to understand astrology from different perspectives. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a comment and share it on social media. It was really fun to make this video and we'll keep bringing more videos to our community. So hit that subscribe button if you want to stick around for more. If you liked it, drop a comment and even if you hate it, drop a comment. We'll appreciate it. See you in the next video.